Hey everyone, the OKist Gamer here. Today we're going to be doing a partial teardown of the AOK Zoe. We're going to look at the controller, the various components, and how to do some repairs. Alright, let's jump into it. So a few tools you're going to need is a screwdriver with a double zero Phillips head. Uh, and you'll need a couple different types of picks. There's the flat guitar pick one and the one with the handle. Uh, you can use either one. Uh, this one will be good later for the battery. So I've already taken this apart, but there's basically eight screws at the back. Um, just need to unscrew them. There'll be a little sticker here, so that's your warranty, so just keep that in mind that uh, you have to take off the warranty sticker. So I recommend when you're first starting, like I've already opened mine up here, but uh, I would recommend starting in the corner and you just wanna gently go along and you'll hear clicking as you go. Uh, don't try to force anything, just take it nice and slow. And once you've done that, then all the clips should pop and you should be able to get in here. So first thing we're gonna do is take off our sticker. And then we need to remove the ribbon cables. So this one here is what connects this uh, controller board to the main board. So we're just gonna lift it. It's a pressed down ribbon cable. I use these, uh, these little plastic picks uh, they're very gentle and can help you get in places where you need to. I'm just going to use it over here too. This has a little tab that you lift up. You can pull this out. This is your RGB. Connects right here. Then we're going to take this guy out. also lifts up. This is your... What is it now? Your home button. I believe, in the bottom left corner. Lift that up. This is your trigger button. It's a little bit uncomfortable to get this out because of the padding that's around the battery. Okay. And there's one more here, but I'm gonna first remove this uh, trigger. So for the trigger, this was already part of the case, so we don't need to worry about that hole. Just gonna be two screws, very little ones, so be careful not to lose them. And this can lift out, put that aside. Now we have one more ribbon cable here we're gonna pop out. So this one's a little different than the other tabs. It lifts from the back. So we're gonna lift that up and I'm just gonna keep it propped open while I pull it out gently with a, my tongs here. Okay, so there's three cords, cords. There's three screws that we need to remove here. Uh, these cords here, what I was gonna say, uh, are soldered on, so we're gonna be we're gonna leave those. Very tiny screws. They are the same as the shoulder buttons, so not a big deal if you put them in the same pile. doesn't want to come out whatever I'll leave it with the board for now so now we can pull the board out just be gentle because it's still connected to the to the rumble the screw is I don't want it to move in there it's probably because of the the modification I did on the other side so I did a small modification it looks pretty pretty hack but it actually works pretty well uh, I just took some some duct tape, some Gorilla tape, whatever, and you just put them on the corners. And what this does is it apply, it basically gives a little small gap, about one millimeter, that uh, makes the D-pad work significantly better. So I'm just going to put this aside. Now, if you wanted to do anything with your D-pad, any kind of experimenting or playing with, this is basically the membrane. 
And I'm not gonna pull this out because I have a, a thing on the other side that makes it difficult to come out, but you would just grab it and lift it out. All right, so for the joystick, for the analog, there's basically three screws you need to remove. So what you'll need to do is take these three out. And again, they're the same size as the rest. So if you mix the pile, don't worry about it. All right, so the this little yellow ring right here makes it so that that cap is extremely difficult to push through. So what I'm gonna do for this video is I'm just gonna pull it up and I'm gonna pull this analog right off, the cap right off the analog. So I'm gonna leave the cap in there and spin it back the way it was. So before I go into the analog, um, what I wanted to quickly touch on here is for others that have had issues where uh, this ring here becomes loose, usually what happens is it's very difficult to see. I'll see if my camera can zoom in on it. Is hopefully the focus is right. Is there's these little black three spots here that are uh, basically plastic welded or just kind of melted closed. So sometimes these will uh, pop off and then you'll get this side that's moving which interrupts the joystick because it causes rubbing. So if that happens, what I'd recommend is uh, there's a couple different ways you could put some super glue and glue it back down. Uh, if you do that though, make sure that you disassemble the device, take out the pad. These have a, uh, a habit of getting damaged just from the fumes of super glue. So make sure there's nowhere around. I don't recommend super glue. What I would recommend instead is just a little tiny bit of uh, hot glue that can just kind of hold it in place. Uh, I've found in other repairs that that's actually worked quite well. Um, so if you have that issue, it's one of these three things that have uh, got damaged. Okay, so back to the analog. So this is the analog module. So if you needed to replace your analog, the last steps are taking off these last two screws and then taking off the analog module and putting a fresh one on. And of course, just lining it up so that the you know, there's three posts here. So just have that one little slot lined up at this post and you'll have it in the right direction. Okay, so I'm not going to uh, bother bother you with putting it back together because it's the same as taking it apart just in reverse order. So I'll just show you some close-ups of the analog module if you're curious, just to see what the connector looks like, what the module itself looks like. So these are Hall Effect. So I have tested them that uh, if you put a little magnet beside, it'll register movement. Okay, well, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments. And if you have any other videos you'd like to see for uh, repairs or teardown for the AOK Zoe, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.